Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use um, this tool called Winery, which um, is great for um, remote debugging on an actual device, and this greatly helps when you're when you're looking at our Row Mobile JavaScript APIs. You can use um, traditional web browser tools, developer tools, to debug your JavaScript. And also to, you can use it for uh, looking at styling as well for your application. So if you're familiar, if you're familiar with, uh, like, let's say, Chrome Dev Tools, you'll be very familiar with uh, this concept. And I'm going to show you how to um, uh, to use it with, with Row Mobile. Um, first thing you're going to need to do is install Winery. And um, you can go to this website here. Um, and look at the installation instructions. It does work on the Mac as well as Windows. It is a, a Node.js application. So with Row Mobile Suite, we actually install Node.js for uh, Row Connect um, testing. So you already have Node installed, so you basically just need to go to a command prompt and type npm install winery, and it'll download the package from um, you know, the NPM, which is a package manager, go up to a URL, download the latest winery, and install it. And then once you um, have it installed, you essentially just open a, a command prompt and type winery uh, with the bound host. So I'm going to first do that just to make sure I have winery set up. So I'm going to open a terminal window. I am on a Mac, but you can do the same thing on Windows. And if you ever forget the commands, just type in winery dash dash help, and it'll tell you what to type. So I'm going to, um, here's the key, is that you make sure that you do dash dash bound host and put in your IP address of your computer, of your laptop, okay? Uh, so I am gonna, my laptop is right now running on this IP address, so I'm going to go ahead and, and bound, uh, bound my winery server to this particular IP address. So now you can see it's starting. It doesn't really tell you anything else after that, but it tells you this. Um, IP address to go to. So let me type that in here. And if you hit this page, you can basically uh, say that your winery server is actually running correctly. If you haven't gotten this far, then you're going to need to um, go through the installation instructions again. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is to include a line of code in your in your application, in your, um, in your ERB views, or in your HTML file. And it's really just a script reference to a JavaScript file. And the JavaScript file is located on your local machine, whoops, um, your machine, your IP address running on this particular port, um, and it's using this username anonymous, which is OK. So you, you essentially just need to copy this. And now let me go into Rose Studio. And now I had um, in, uh, built this very simple example. This is another tutorial I did to demonstrate the barcode APIs, our new JavaScript APIs in 4.0. And I have my application is set up to basically uh, my index page um, is pointing to these HTML files that I have in my public folder. And I just happened to pick this barcode.enumerate one just to show you as an example. And here's my barcode enumerate, and I just included that script file uh, reference that was mentioned in the winery instructions. And that's all I did. So then I compiled and, and uh, installed it on my device. Now, the device needs to be, obviously, on the same. This communicates over Wi-Fi. So um, I have a local Wi-Fi environment set up here, and obviously it needs to be able to see that machine and get to this IP address. So let me open up my device and let's just go back to the home page okay so now um, let me go to my um, winery window here so once you copy it um, actually before launching the device what you what you want to do is um, go into this debug client user interface okay this is where all your debug is going to happen I'm just going to drag it over so we can see both windows at the same time OK, and you can see that right now um, it says on the remote tab that I have no uh, uh, targets is, is the device connecting. Right. So there's nothing there. When I uh, launch the enumerate task here uh, to go to that page where I inserted that script, it's going to connect to the winery server and this should light up green. 
Okay, so let me let me demonstrate that, and then I'll cover the the other things you can do in here. So, so I just clicked uh, the enumerate. It loaded the page. Remember, it was that local page in my Rose Studio project. You can see that's taking a little extra time to load the JavaScript and process. But once you see this green item here, then you know you have a good connection. So now this is different than actually pointing your browser to the local server running on the device. This is a true device, and this is true re remote uh, debugging and uh, somewhat of a control, right? Like if you were looking at some layout issues, you can come in here, and if you're familiar with these uh, dev tools, you can see that as I'm hovering over this button tag, it's highlighting on my actual device. And you can play around with CSS styles, you can change attributes just like you would in a normal web application. Um, the thing is, you know, as you know, real mobile applications are essentially a web application running natively on a device. Um, so you can do your typical web, you know, playing around with these this console. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time walking through that, but it's definitely useful um, when it comes to layout. Um, other tabs to performance with networking. What I'm here to show you is actually looking at some of our APIs. So if I go over to the console tab, um, I had this uh, this button wired up. And let me jump back into Rose Studio. This button is wired up to essentially run this uh, barcode, row.barcode.enumerate. So as you know, this API uh, does not run in the row simulator. You essentially have to run it on a device. So any hardware types of APIs you need to run on a device. And um, it's kind of difficult to debug unless you're using a tool like this. So uh, when I click on that button, this this uh, command is going to execute, and I'll actually see some information that being displayed in the in the console on uh, Winery. So let me go ahead and do that. So you can see that there's actually some information outputted from uh, from Row Mobile that. Um, it's it's some information about you know what we put in our log files. Now, if you looked at the row log uh, dot text, you'll see a lot of other things that are non JavaScript uh, specific device information, just platform logs. If you're just inter interested in trying to debug JavaScript, um, this is a, a a good way to do it. Now, what's nice is um, you know you can in my application, I didn't actually do anything besides this enumerate. But if you wanted to look at um, the APIs and actually try them, right? And we have different ways of doing things now in 4.0. So you may not be familiar with what is what is returned from the different parameters, and you're just getting familiar with it. Um, you know, you can come in here and actually from this console do some controlling and executing of our API. So if I wanted to turn on the barcode, all right, it's row.barcode enable. And uh, the first parameter, if you look at the documentation, you'll see the parameters. But the first parameter is a list of properties, which I'm not going to set any properties. But the second one is the callback handler. So and this is what I will typically do for just seeing what comes back from a callback. So in barcode.enable, uh, the last parameter is a, bar, uh, is a callback. So I'm just going to do an anonymous function, and then I'm going to say, okay, here's what's really nice, log, console.log, and tell me, show me what comes back uh, from, this, uh, from this particular um, callback. Um, okay, and in this case, the, the enable will enable the barcode button and then when you actually scan a barcode, you'll see this callback will get um, executed. Okay, so um, just made a little typo there. So now that closes the anonymous function, and then this obviously closes the the actual function call for enable. Okay, so let's execute that now. If I typed it correctly, you'll see this um, you know this kind of JSON string and response um, coming back, right? It's basically telling you that it initialized properly, so that's a good, really good sign. If you if you get an error, then you know that um, you didn't you didn't actually do the syntax correctly. So it's a nice way to just even just check syntax. So now my barcode is actually enabled, right? So let me go scan a barcode. Before it wasn't enabled because I didn't do any of this code, but I'm actually controlling it. So I don't know if you heard the beep, but it actually, I scanned a barcode and it beeped. And what's really cool now is I can just inspect this object without having to write any code. I can just come in here and say, oh, this object that's returned from barcode.enable 
is um, of this type. It's an object, and it basically has these parameters. So now I know I'll have data, direction, length, source, time, type, etc. Those will be the attributes. And if I looked at the online documentation, let's just go to Edge Docs, which is the current where the current uh, documentation is for 4.0, and I look at barcode. and then I go to uh, enable, I will see that the callback is returning those same exact parameters that I just mentioned before, data source, type, time, length, right? So uh, it's a nice way to kind of look at, um, look at the API. So you can really, um, you know, execute anything. So if I wanted to look at um, the application, Right, so if I look at application and I want to inspect some of these properties, right, or even system, system's a good one. Let me look at system, and I can see. Let's just check properties. Like, does this have a have a camera? This device, right? So let's check if this API is working. All right, so we can see that it actually returns true. Here's the call that that is sent. And I can just come in here and, and do these types of things um, um, and, and look at my syntax and also see if, um, you know, do some debugging, right? Maybe I'm not doing the syntax correctly. So it's a really useful tool. Also, you can see if, um, uh, you, um, if you have all the capabilities in your JavaScript file. So one thing that's important to know about our, our JavaScript file for 4.0 is that uh, we dynamically build the JavaScript based on the extensions that you include and also for the platform. So in this case, I'm running on an Android device. And if I look at my build.yaml for this project, I have app type row elements. Well, app type row elements will include several um, APIs uh, by default, essentially um, the APIs that are require a license. So if you go to the API summary, Anything that has a um, kind of a star in this bucket here is what will be included as an extension for for row elements. Okay, so um, let's look at um, if I look at the sensor. If I look at the sensor API, this is not a row elements API, but I would I need to include an extension sensor in here. So if I actually try to execute uh, row dot sensor, you can already tell that it's going to return undefined. So if you try to write a simple, you try to do the test examples and you're getting undefined um, and you, you're stumbling around with that, this would have been a, a good way just to kind of see that, hey, the JavaScript is not including that and give you some clues as to what you need to do. So if I went ahead and, and actually, you know, added extensions sensor to my build.yaml and rebuilt, then that API will actually be available inside of the JavaScript and I can make use of it. So uh, Winery is a really good tool. Um, it'll help you get familiar with uh, the APIs and you can play around with it and also help you with your uh, JavaScript debugging when it comes to our APIs uh, running on a real device. Um, you can also do other things like I mentioned before and, and there's plenty of uh, resources out on the internet about general um, you know, web uh, styling, debugging, uh, looking at CSS, using some of these other tabs as well. I'm not going to cover that, but I um, hope you found this tutorial useful and um, as you're getting more familiar with the new Row Mobile APIs.